the moment is here. Yes, we have finally received Glide, which is the brand new uh, New England IPA from Morrison's in with Salt Brewery and Drop Project. But what's this 7% IPA going to be like? Is the anticipation and wait worth it? Keep on watching to find out. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we're going to be reviewing Glide. This is one of the brand new beers from Morrison's. Now, um, it came out with all the other new ones. You may have seen them reviewed a week or so more ago. Um, but only just barely got hold of this one. And this is a New England IPA, one of my favourite styles, which people who watch the channel will know. Um, and obviously this was three quid as well. So not even one of the most expensive ones in Morrison's. Salt make great beers and Drop Project. Haven't seen them in the supermarkets, uh, but they're collaborating with Salt on this one. But obviously it's a salt lead because you can see with the sort of uh, the graphics really that it's definitely a salt lead with, a, with the sort of this honeycomb sort of graphics. But it looks quite snazzy. 7%. Uh, in terms of the hops, it has got, um, as he says, I'm sure it said the hops in here. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Simcoe, Mosaic and Strata. So they're more on the sort of dank sort of side of, of, of uh, uh, there's nothing bright like a Citra. There's no Idaho Sever, any of that sort of stuff. So Mosaic, Simcoe and Strata. Interesting combination, but let's crack it open, get it in a glass and see what it's all about. I mean, you know, we, we've had some great beers from Salt. One of my, you know, fav, one of my favourite Salt beers uh, is, in fact, one of my favourite supermarket beers, the Salt Alpaca. That's a great beer. But let's see what this one's like. Well, certainly beer in a glass, it's thick, it's hazy, but there's a lot of going, a lot of carbonation going on with, with this. It's got a sort of slightly, it's a light gold colour. It's not quite in that, that yellowy custard colour, but it's certainly not sort of orange as well. It's, it's definitely sort of somewhere in between. You know, we've seen lots of uh, New England IPAs looking like this. A lot of fast moving um, carbonation, which seems to have stopped, but we've got pretty much a one finger head. Yeah, slightly uh, compacted. It looks pretty good. It looks lighter than it probably, probably will be at 7%, but let's see what the aromas are like. Yeah, I mean, this smells like you would expect when you've got Strata and Simcoe in it, certainly. There's a lot of grapefruit, citrus fruit. There is that sort of slight, that mosaic aroma, that sort of, it's got a slight sort of, I don't know, it's, it's not quite the sort of bubble gum, but sort of a slight berry sort of tone to it. Yeah, I mean, it smells fresh. It smells quite bright and, and zesty. But it's not the biggest aroma for a 7% IPA. But it's inviting because it's got all those sort of really sort of citrus, juicy fruit. So let's tuck in, shall we? Cheers, everyone. Now, let, before I drink it, I'm just going to say that I've got such high expectations of this that I'm probably only going to get disappointed by it. But let's do it anyway. Cheers. Drink's quite light, it's quite refreshing. You get a big hit of zest, but I'm getting I'm getting that bubblegum in flavour. That that the mosaic is really sort of big in this beer. Big hits of sort of bubblegum, sort of almost like blueberry sort of flavour. A bit strange, but it's yeah, it's got that sort of blueberry. If you ever any had those blue slush puppies, that sort of which I'm sure is blueberry or maybe grape. It's got, almost got that sort of flavour to it. No, it, it's, it, the big flavour for me is bubblegum. There's a, there's a bubblegum and then there's a sweetness in there. And then there's a sort of tropicalness, but there is, it's very difficult to sort of pick out distinct fruits. Then that sort of lace with a citrus more grapefruit sort of flavour on the back end, really. It's very light. The carbonation is quite soft. You know, there's quite a lot of carbonation when we poured it. It's pretty soft in terms of it glides down really well. 
but it has got that dankness that that almost resinous sort of pine more resinous than piney i would say it's so light though it, i mean you drink it and it's almost i don't want to say it but i'm gonna say it almost watery sort of taste it doesn't you, you you get those big hits of flavors you get that big sort of bubblegum sort of hit that berry that sort of red grape almost then you get a little bit of tropicalness and then a little bit of grapefruit but there's not really much in terms of even the grapefruit that comes in it's you get it's almost a little bit of pink grapefruit it's it's a bit sweeter this and then you're expecting that grapefruit flavor to ride it round itself up with a little bit of soft bitterness but it doesn't come it just sort of washes itself away really it's a very easy drinking new england ipa but i can't really decide whether i really like it or not when i first put it to my lips i thought and i had that you know there was a lot of grapefruit in there i was thinking it's going to be a bit like the north brewing the not the north brewing the north which is that sort of collab with northern monk and overtone and Meon Raptor, um, almost had that sort of, that sort of expectation there's going to be a bit, a lot of grapefruit in there, and I had a lot of grapefruit in it, but the grapefruit is not even the bigger flavour, it's this bubblegummy flavour. And there's, an, there's a very light earthiness. So I think this is definitely a big mosaic lead beer. The Strata and the Simcoe giving a little bit of earthiness, giving a little bit of that grapefruit in there, but it's but it's almost like a little bit watery in taste. It's an interesting one because it, it does drink like a palau. It's so light, it's so easy to drink, which is dangerous at 7%. If it's only it's only for the fact that the flavour's a little bit dang, there's a lot of twangness to it, that resinous quality to it. But then it, it, the way that it washes itself away, it sort of tastes really like, like a pale ale, really. And I'm, I'm wanting to get more of that flavour in. It's, you know, it feels like there's a, it's lacking as if there's all the, there's a hop flavours in there, but they're sort of a little bit held back. It's an interesting one. I, I think maybe, I, you know, I'd have to drink more of these. But for the moment, it's a good beer and it's a different beer. But I don't think it's a great beer. It's not up there with Alpaca. It's not even up there with some of the, you know, the Faith in the Futures or the Transit, those the Northern Monk New England IPAs, Scaffell, beers like that. But it's an interesting one. It's light, 7%. I mean, you know, when you think, I think of the other salt one, the um, Knuckleback, is it, the, in the red can? That's like quite a low ABV IPA. And that's a New England, might be a New England pal, actually. But that seems to be more, more, have more flavour and more body. This is very light in flavour. It's an interesting one, but let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for Glide. This is a New England IPA from Morrison's, and it's with Salt and Drop Project. And it's an interesting beer. It's, it's very interesting. Is it a great beer? Not quite. Let's go through the scores. So first the aroma. Pop the can. I could get some real sort of real bright citrus, zesty, grapefruit sort of aromas. And then there was also that sort of slight berry aroma in there. The mosaic was sort of, you know, sort of coming to the fore a little bit. I mean, mosaic is one of those sort of hops that I'm not a massive fan of. Certainly on its own. I'm a very, you know, if I see anything that's like just mosaic, I just I give it usually give it a sort of a bit of a, a bit of a swerve really, but it's in so many other beers that you think yeah actually it can contribute to to give it a better stuff to it because if it's not overly dominant but it's quite dominant even in the aroma. There's that sort of slight dank resinous, get more grapefruit and citrus and that sort of berry sort of aroma that, and that's what you get. It's not bad. I'm giving it 13 appearance. Well, I mean, you know, we'll go into this later, but I've nearly drank it. It's a nice, it's a nice light colour. We've got, you can see there, the head is, you know, pretty well retained. I think it's it's a solid 8 out of 10 for appearance. Flavour. Well, like the aromas, you're getting that grapefruit flavour, but the big hit is that sort of that 
typical mosaic um, flavour of that sort of bubble gum, sort of almost like a berry, sort of, uh, you know, like a blueberry sort of flavour in there. There's other sort of tropical and citrus, but they're very light and you, it's really difficult to pick them out. Then you're getting this sort of grapefruit flavour, but there's a sweetness in there. And, you, and you're expecting something on the back end and there, you're expecting that grapefruit to develop a little bit more on the palate, but it just doesn't, just sort of washes itself away. It's a very soft, the carbonation is almost non-existent and that's why it glides down so, so uh, easily. Maybe that's why it's called glide. I mean, it does definitely do what it says on the, on the, on the tin. It glides down so smoothly. It drinks like 4% parallel, to be honest, but a very light, non-carbonated parallel. It's incredible how easy it is to drink this. Um, you could probably get drink quite a few of these and, and then suddenly they would sort of catch up on you, really. So flavour-wise, I think it's good. But I'm just, ex and it's slightly different as well than a lot of New England IPAs that all can start tasting a little similar. As I say, the mosaic is definitely big in there and the Simcoe and Strauss gives that sort of grapefruit and the earthiness in there. But it's, for a 7% New England IPA, with those hops in it, you expect that earthiness to be a bit, a bit more stronger really. And it, it's not, it's very, very light. So I don't know whether that's, you know, it's like, oh, well, Salt sort of said, this is for the sort of general supermarket buyers and at three quid, it's not expensive. So maybe they just reduced the level of hops in, in there. Maybe the mosaic sort of dominated a little bit more and they were just sort of in the background because it it almost drinks a little bit like the supermarket beers of old, a little bit watery, but at 7%, that's a little watery. That doesn't really sort of make sense. Flavour-wise, I'm giving it 33. I think on another day, I could give it 31. On another day, I could probably give it 34. The flavours are there. They're just not punchy enough for me. Value for money. Well, it's a 7%, three different hops, IPA. It's, it's three different, yeah. Simcoe, Strata, and uh, a Mosaic. Three hops. Interesting hops, really, when you think about it. Probably needed some citra in there just to give it a little bit more oomph really but um value for money is three quid it's a seven percent new england ipa and it's it drinks really well it's very an easy drinker it's one of those sort of beers that you think oh i'm gonna have a people round or oh, i just want a couple of drinks i can just kick back not think too much about three quid is a great price i'm giving it a nine out of ten i think it was a better beer a bit more to it it would get a ten but i still think it's worthy of a nine for value and then my overall experience, again, on a, on a different day, this could vary, but I'm going to give it 14 because, you know, at the end of the day, the proof's in the pudding. This is so easy to drink. And I'll tell you what, I'm glad I bought two because I might have another one straight after this. It's so easy to drink. The flavours are there and they're slightly different. And as I say, the more I drink it, the more I think, mm, actually, it's a better beer. Yeah, I think it's good now because it's, it's different and the, the flavours are there, but they're not quite all there, you know. There's not enough, there's just not enough of them really. For a 7% IPA, you expect a little bit more, a little bit more chewiness. It's, you know, you've got those very earthy, dank sort of hops. You know, they're all three of them, Mosaic, Strata, Simcoe, they're all, they're all similar in certain ways and all different in others, but that sort of earthiness that they usually bring, all three of them, that sort of a little danker, resinous sort of flavour. You just expect it to be a bit more. But then for a lot of people, if it was more, they probably wouldn't like it. So it's an interesting one. I don't know why it's brewed. It's they've like looked at the audience and they've brewed it accordingly instead of just trying to make a good beer with those hops. 14 though for overall because I've drank it. It's a nice beer. It's just that we've had better. We've had more flavoursome beers in the past. I, I think it could end up becoming a more of a favourite though, because and I think a lot of people would really like it. Certainly nothing wrong with this beer at all. It just, just feels like it's lacking something. But whereas some other supermarket beers, and the one that thinks drinks to mind is that recent one I did with the vocation one from Asda, that was lacking in lots of the different areas. This is just so no, the expectation for a 7% New England IPA with these hops, you're expecting that more of it. But then if you had more of it, you'd probably go, well, oh, it's a little bit of a, there's a bit of an edge to it. So I'm going to give it 14. I think that's worthy. And I think on another day, I could probably quite easily give it 16. Um, so the Totino scores up, we get 77. 
it's still a recommended beer. It's at the sort of nearly at the highly recommended level. It's a good beer. It's a seven percenter. And I think that if you if you go to Morrison's and you're up, up for some beers, I think it's definitely worth getting. Is it as good as the I think it's better than the Northern Monk one, the uh the I want to say Order of the Faith, but Order of the North. I think it's better because it's a little bit more it's more drinkable than that. That was very, very heavy on grapefruit, a little bit too much. This is more drinkable, certainly. So I think it's better than that, although I probably look at my scores and I probably gave that a better score. Um Let's have a quick look at that anyway. Sorry that I'm going on. This video is going to probably get closer to 15 minutes. I just wanted to have a quick look at the score of that one. Oh no, 79 that got. Oh. Yeah, as I say, on a different day, I think you better. I, th I think it is it's at the higher end of that recommended level. Not highly. I don't think it's as good as Shoot to Frill. I don't think it's as good as, good as Shoot to Frill. It's not as good as Alpaca. Um, the other supermarket beers were um the invisible cities one yeah that was at sort of high 70s as well transmission was at high 70s yeah i mean on on the on the on the count of it it's 77 it's actually lower than them but i i would say that that's the thing with this morrison's lot i've got the jam roly poly one that i still haven't drank because i'm a little bit not sure of that you know and i've got to admit the magic rock ones i have drank the the ipa haven't reviewed it yet I would say that that's not really the one. That's not, they're not great beers at all. But not bad. 77, as I say, on a good day, this could be better. And I think people are going to like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, you know what you're going to do. Keep on rocking.